Hey everybody, how's it going today? I hope everybody's having a wonderful blessed day today. Today I want to talk about beware of online scammers. Today I want to talk about beware of online scammers. I'm going to take my time here and allow the Lord to give me the word to say as I go forth with this video here to help the body of Christ as much as I can because these subjects really are helpful. And I know I have done this subject a few times as it's a subject that I'm passionate about because you know, it breaks my heart to see somebody who has fallen victim to an online scammer, okay? Now, let me just say this. Most time, all the time, scammers, they will use a promise of a relationship in order to hook you in, okay? Now, how many times do we hear scammers? You know, I come across a few of them in my past, okay? How many times have we ever heard of a scammer offering a friendship? Can you answer me that question there, honestly? Not very often, okay? See, most scammers, they know the best way to get a, get a hold of somebody and to reel them in like a fish on a hook is by offering you a relationship, okay? Saying that you finally met your soulmate, you finally met your future spouse, right? <laughs> That's where I come from, right? You finally met somebody. And some of them will even use the word, you know, I've been praying for God to send me somebody your way. And here you are. They will use God's name as a manipulation tactic, tactic I should say, to, to lure you in and make you think that, hey, I found somebody. You're where I come from. You might want to be careful with that because there's many people that use the Lord's name in vain, okay? See, the thing about scammers is they're very slick, okay? They will use pictures of an attractive person, okay? See, if you're an average person like me, right? I mean, I'm not saying it can't happen, okay? Say like for the guys or I want to, you know, talk to the bros right quick, okay? For an average guy like me, right? Do you think somebody above average is going to be messaging you, wanting to get your number and wanting to get to know you? So, I'm, so I mean, why they have more better options out there? And so I mean, right? And so I said, set a point I try to bring home here. See, that's where most guys and myself have fallen in the past behind that. You know, the thing that, oh yeah, this person really wants me. So I come from, right? But oftentimes they could be just scamming you, right? See, when you uh, talk to some of those people, right? You know, they will send you heart emojis. See, the bad thing is, too, as I say it is, um, one of the bad things is most folks will get feelings behind the screen. That's a very dangerous thing to do, my friend. Most folks will get feelings behind the screen for somebody they have never met. That is a dangerous feeling right there. It's where I come from. Yes, it feels good to have somebody in your inbox. Don't get me wrong, okay? However, just because something looks good don't mean it's good for you, okay? So, I mean, see, most folks, you know, that are scammers, they just lure you in because they know that some people are going to be that barnable to fall for the trap, okay? To fall for the bait that's hanging in, hanging in the water on a fishing hook, okay? So, I come from they're going to think that you're going to catch feelings that's right off the bat just because somebody said, oh, I love you. Hey, cutie. Hey, handsome. You got where I come from. See, my question is, how in the world do you fall in love with somebody you never met? Can somebody answer me that? How do you fall in love with somebody you have never met in your lifetime? So I was all saying. It's like buying an item on eBay, an analogy I use all the time. You see the item on eBay, it looks good to you, you uh, decide to buy it, but you don't know how the item is going to be until it arrives at your door, okay? Decide buying a pair of shoes or decide buying a pair of clothes, while some people like to go clothing shopping online. Yeah, they appear to be the right size online, but once you get them on your body, do they actually fit the way that description online describes? So I mean, See my point? See, that's really what I say. It's always best to be careful with who you meet online, okay? Because not everybody portrays who they are is who they are, okay? 
Now, there are some folks, I want to go on this side right here. There are some folks that could be just playing somebody and leading them on, okay? There are. Some folks can be just playing somebody just to pacify their time or pacify their boredom. It's, you know, basically just leading you on. Making you think you met a friend or making you think you have, have met somebody. They can, they can lead you on real easily. So our company. They only call you when they need you for something, but they never want to hear about your uh, your accomplishments and goals and things you want to accomplish in your life, okay? Like a true friend would. You get where I come from, right? See, oftentimes you run into those type of people too, and that seems to be, um, you know, what's uh, overlooked all the times because most folks, when you talk about be wire bone like scammers, you know, just talk about this relationship things, and then you just basically have to be aware of who you talk to online in general because behind the screen you could talk talk and pretend to be somebody you're not in person okay so i come from you can basically edit yourself into somebody online that you're not in person so i mean there are some people that actually do that there are there's some people that actually do that you may think that they're who they say they are but Reason why most of those people pretend to be somebody they're not on social media. Y'all know the reason why that is? Because they know they will never lock eyes with you in person. That's why. And it's easy for them to do that. That's their attitude. That's their attitude. It's like, you know, I'm never going to cross paths with this person. So I might as well go ahead and play these people to uh, pretend to be somebody or be to pretend to be somebody I am not just to pacify the day. You know, that's uh, leading somebody on right there, okay? So, I mean, see, it makes it hard. When somebody comes across people like that, it makes it hard to trust people on social media. Are they really who they say they are or just pulling you on? So, I mean, are they really for real with you or are they just playing with you? So, I mean, are they just playing games with you or are you just their play toy that... They just play with on their board spare time. And once they get something interesting going on, they get busy. They stick you up on the corner shelf somewhere. When it's your time again, they'll take you down to play with you some more and put you back up on the shelf. You know, just like a spare tire on a vehicle, for example. You know, most people don't need that spare tire, right? But once that spare tire is ready to be used, they pull that spare tire out. They put it on, go down the road, and... Use that tire for how long they need to get it until the tire is repaired that's uh, flattened or dry rotted is repaired and they put that spare tire back. Yeah, I mean, that stuff actually does happen, right? That's where I come from. See, the reason why I'm passionate about this type of subject is because I want to say something that helps somebody get out of that situation if that's what they are in, okay? So, I mean, See, the bad thing is, if somebody that's, okay, let me just say this. The bad thing is, you know, as somebody is not, you know, like either if you or I meet somebody that's a potential relationship, you plan on marrying someday, okay? Or either a friend, right, in general. If they do not make preparations to meet up someday and see each other in person, there's a problem, you know what I'm saying? There's a problem there because most of the time what I have seen over the years, right? You know, that's a 39 year old man, right? When a friend meets a friend for the first time, they're eager to get to know each other, right? They're, they're eager to spend time with one another, right? So I mean, just like with a person that's seeking a potential relationship, right? When they meet each other, they want to spend time with each other and get to know one another more, right? So I mean, they don't, they don't, they don't lead them around like a, a string on a puppet, like a puppet string. Get where I come from. They don't lead them around like that because there are some folks on social media that are bad about this. I'm not saying all, but majority. They string a person alone, making them think that they may they have made a genuine friend, but they have not made made, made one, I should say. 
and um, <clears throat> they'd be strung along and be used, you know what I mean? Let me uh, say, <coughs> sorry about that. The water went down the wrong pipe, but anyway, let me uh, say this. You know what I have noticed for some of these scammers or some of these people that lead somebody on on social media? Oftentimes, they will use you as their venting buddy. What do I mean by that? They will tell you every single problem they have with their family member, their friend. Now, the bad thing about that is, I'll say this, just because you vented the strangers on social media about somebody you know in person don't mean they don't have any somewhat ties to the person that you've been in about, okay? So I got from. See, that's that's a mistake I have seen with some of those uh, <clears throat> people on social media that do those type of things. They'll go on there and be like, well, I was going to talk about how sorry my family members are. I'm going to talk about how sorry my friends are. All these different things. Or I'm going to talk about you know how sorry this person is. It's not I mean. It's like you're just telling random strangers too much information, TMI, way too much information. You know, it's so crazy to me that most folks feel so doggone comfortable with sharing their personal business that should be private with random strangers they will never meet. So I mean, random strangers they will never meet. That's how I got from. You see what, see what I'm getting at, right? It just seems like you know, some people these days have just gotten way too comfortable with oversharing. You know what I mean? You, you tell everybody everything except for your swivel toilet in your house if you have one, okay? So I come from how they told you the swivel's about falls over with you every time you bend over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, for real. I mean, that's why some people are just share way too much information, right? That's what they do. But then they wonder how does somebody they know in person get a hold of that information that was told about them, okay? That's so where I come from, right? But as I can say, just because you go venting to people or uh, talking to people on social media that you'll never meet in person, it does not guarantee you that you that the person that you're venting to does not know those people in real life that you're talking about, okay? It does not guarantee you that because somebody knows somewhere, somebody somewhere, okay? So, I mean, somebody knows somebody, okay? That's where I come from, right? If you have, let's say, about a couple thousand friends or more, so-and-so followers, I guarantee you, if you talk to each one of those folks, right, I guarantee you one of them is going to know somebody you know in person. So, I mean, and this has happened before, and I have heard about that. So, that's why I say you got to be careful about who you meet online and who you tell your problems to online, okay? And be aware of those online scammers, okay? Because those online scammers, they know what kind of bait to use. They're not going to use a friendship bait, okay? Whereas why they're not going to use a friendship bait? Because they know that's not going to work. They do. They know it's not going to work. They're going to be like, man, no, this ain't going to work. So, the, so if I say I want to be a good friend, you want a friend? Be like, man, no, I'll get that at Walmart or somewhere, okay? That's where I come from, right? But like I say, it's a good thing when people do meet each other on social media. It's a wonderful thing when it does happen. But there is so much more that could go wrong behind meeting somebody on social media that could go right, okay? You got to keep that in mind. There's a lot more that could go wrong than right when it comes to meeting meeting somebody in person from online that you haven't met, okay? So, I mean, because, you know, social media, like I said, I mean, you can basically just edit, it, edit yourself into anything you want to be, okay? Yeah, I keep that in mind. I mean, social media, you can't. So, it's like with somebody you're texting, right? If they're only a text only person, you're just going by with, words on the screen okay you're just going by with words and the screen okay you don't know who that person really is behind the screen you could be talking to a guy for example you know you know guys that be you know talking to a woman and you think you're talking to a woman but the whole time it's a guy that's talking to you for the ladies right you're thinking talking to a guy but the whole time 
you're really talking to a woman behind a screen, okay? You got to be careful with that. Just because something glitters and looks good don't mean it's good for you, okay? Say this out when, um, this out when uh, Eve was looking at Satan in the, garden, garden, in the Garden of Eden, right? Just because Satan looked pleasing to her eyes didn't mean it was good for her. So, I mean, some folks think that Eve was looking at a literal snake. How's a literal snake physically attracted? So, I mean, see, when humans are known symbolically as trees, right? So, I mean, so I have some people on study. So, what you get into? But like I say, you know, I just had to make that point. Just because sometimes most folks, most of the scammers or most people that want to play somebody, lead somebody on on social media, they're going to use a physically attractive picture to lure you in. They will. They will use a physically attractive picture to pull you in. So, I mean, see, it's not saying that a, <clears throat> you know, a, you know, above average person ain't going to be talking to somebody that's average. It's not saying one bit, but I mean, it does happen. But my point is, without spirit of discernment and testing spirit by the spirit and not thinking before you leap, really gets you in trouble, okay? See, if you test the Spirit by the Spirit, by the Holy Spirit, and pray about it and ask God to reveal to you as this person for real or, or legit, you, you'll, you'll save yourself a lot of headache and a lot of trouble, my friend. You will. See, see I'll say this as I wrap this video and end this video. I just want to make this point here. Um, if they are willing to give you your phone number and talk to you on the phone, that's a good plus, Okay. Or even FaceTime at that. That's a good plus. But if they do not give you a phone number or they do not offer you a FaceTime or Skype, all they they are is just like a pen pal situation. I mean, if you, want, if you want to entertain that type of person, that's totally up to you to pacify your day and pacify your time. That's totally up to you. But that's all that's going to be, okay? That's all it's ever going to be. That's what I mean. But when that person is for real and legit with you, that's a blessing, okay? When that person is genuine and for real with you, that's a blessing. See, when a person is truly into you, a friend or a relationship partner, potential marriage is interested in you, they're going to be wanting to get to know about you and they're going to want to get and they want you to know about them. They're going to share their dreams or goals with you as well as you sharing yours with them. It's not a one sided deal. OK, it, it, it's it's mutual ground. OK, because they're going to want to get to know your hobbies and things that you enjoy doing just like you, you want to get to know them. OK, so I come from that's how friendships are built. OK. So, I mean, that's how friendships flourish and that's how relationships flourish is by just by talking and getting to know each other. That's how they are built. So, I mean, that's like I say, <clears throat> if it seems to be one-sided, it's best to leave it alone because, trust me, once that person gets what they want from you, skidoo up the door to go. It's a good work up from, right? Because it seems like it took them so long to finally work up the courage to get what they wanted from you. So now they got what they wanted from you. Now they exited the, exited the, the, the uh, door. They finally got what they wanted from you, but now they finally exited the door. Where you saw it come from, right? And so that the way it seems, right? It took them a long time to find the work of the courage to finally ask you for what they want. And then as soon as they, you give them what they want, they'd be like, bye-bye. <laughs> you see where it come from, right? They just string you along just a little bit longer so you they can get exactly what they want from you, right? <laughs> I mean, that's just what I've seen over the years. I'm just being honest. I mean, if anything I do, if there's any kind of video I could post to help the brothers and sisters of Christ from falling into this uh, situation, let that be God's glory, okay? Let that be God's glory for me to do something this type of subject because I don't want to see my brothers and sisters of Christ going through something like that, okay? You know, the sad thing is, I'm going to end for real with this. 
These online scammers, right? These romantic scammers, right? <laughs> you know, when somebody catches feelings behind a screen, somebody gives them money, a couple hundred thousand dollars at the most or however much they give, it's like this. I want to I wanna make this point, okay? There's nothing wrong with helping somebody in need, okay? I'm all for that. That's the one thing God requires us to, but God does not want us to be a fool either. You see my point? God does not want us to be a fool or a doormat. So, I mean, because there are some people out there that will use a caring soul just to take advantage of them. And once they get what they want out at first, they're done with you. Like I said, they, they're out the door. So, I mean, so where I come from. It's a good thing to help somebody in need. Nothing wrong with that. That's a blessing. But the thing of it is, you know, when you have somebody saying to you they need some money, you you might want well, you might want to thank for your leap, okay? So I cover. So I get out here. So that's why why most people warn somebody over and over and over again. Do not give money to somebody online, okay? So I mean, because it always ends up in a bad deal, okay? Because I can say, as soon as you get the money, say it's like the conversation drops out the door to go. That's how I mean, right? Say a true genuine friend would be that way, though. So my point, a true genuine friend would be like that. That's where I come from, right? But like I say, when it comes to meeting people online, you have to be very wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove, okay? And don't let this right here, this heart, leap into the past of that screen right there. Don't do that. At least wait until you meet each other in person and see how you are, okay? Because what may look good to grammar is online. Yeah, grammar is, I say, if I say it wrong, forgive me, okay? What may, may look good and glamorous online is not good and glamorous in person. So I mean, so I come from, right? What may look good and glamorous online is always what you think it is. So I'm saying, so that's the reason why it's always good to make that decision. When you meet somebody in person, what your decision going to be. Let me say this last note right here. If you ever do decide to meet up with somebody on social media, pray about it first, number one. That's that's definitely number one answer to do. Talk to God about it and say, God, if it's not right for me, there's something wrong here, I want you to place that uneasy feeling on me and I will just go do on back away from here. Say, so when you meet up with that person, if you're planning on meeting up with that person, do it in a public place and have somebody with you. Never go meet somebody by yourself. Say, so decide with all these Craigslist meetups, right? Or marketplace meetups, right? You go buy the stuff, right? That's the rule they always say never go alone, right? Never go alone. But for some reason, it seems like. Online dating, if you want to call it that way, or meeting friends for the first time in person on social media, seems to be swept under the rug. It's like, hey, come knock on my door. <laughs> yeah, you might want to think about that, my friend. You might want to think about that before you say that. <laughs> so I say, at least when you meet somebody in person, right, you could catch the vibes from that person at Walmart, anywhere you decide to meet up at, if something ain't right, get out of that situation. But if something seems to be clicking good and everything's working out great, that's a wonderful day, my friend, because like I say, don't let your heart leap past your mind, okay? Don't let those feelings be felt behind the screen, okay? Because those feelings can be deceiving and your heart can be deceiving and that can get you into a lot of trouble, my friend. I hope and pray that this video is helpful and it makes sense to, to you. And, and if you have any questions or feedback or anything, just...
Feel free to leave that in the comment section. I appreciate y'all for taking time to watch, and I hope and pray y'all have a wonderful, blessed day. God bless each and every one of y'all.